Okay, we're just gonna go for it. Pause. Cancel. Start. Alright. Of course now it decides to start thundering. I apologize for my bangs. I can't see myself. We're trying the camera camera again. And we don't have a way to set it up to hook it up to my laptop yet. So I can see myself. I am working on it. Oh, can we do this? Oh god, where'd my coffee go? Did I just make a drink and... Sorry. I'll be back. I found it. Hello, and welcome to the Once Upon... Stop yelling! Hello, and welcome to the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. This is a crafty puppy podcast coming to you from Southern Connecticut. I am your host, Gabby, and you can find me everywhere online as... Gabigail's rude. You can find all my hand eyed yarns at Once Upon a Corgi. We are most active on Instagram, but we are available on everywhere as those two handles. Uh, we have the two corgis putzing around today. If you hear the pitter patter, that is them. We are very excited to be back after I want to say like three weeks of not podcasting. Ooh, I know, pop a up. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you are new, Thank you very much for checking us out. We have uh, just returned from a Nashville trip. So the two weeks before that trip, we were uh, getting ready for the SSK Marketplace. And then we were there, and now we are back, and we are podcasting. Irene, you can do it, bud. Do you need a, do you need a spot? Irene needs me to spot him walking up the stairs to the bed. Safety first, Puffle Up. So yeah, we are very glad to be back, and during a thunderstorm nonetheless. So uh, I think we have some administrative stuff. Hold on, my show notes keep turning off. We do have two giveaways that are going on in the Ravelry group. And if I did not pull the prizes for those, I haven't checked. I will do that right now and put them on the screen. And if I have already pulled the prizes for those, good job me for getting out of the game, but I don't think I did. So those will be on the screen. Winners, just get in contact with me on Ravelry and I will get you in touch with the designers. And those are for the uh, Springtime Melody by Jen Sheelan and Potluck Pullover by Vicky. I'm not even going to try and say your last name, but I'm really sorry. But I love you. All right, I think that's it for administrative stuff. We don't have any other giveaways going on right now. I'm trying to take a break and get back into the swing of things. I apologize if I look super tired, because I am. But that's just life. And I lost my coffee again. Here it is. All right, let's get into some crafting things. I will start off with what am I wearing? I am wearing the Coco Dress by Tilly and the Buttons out of a black floral, floral on black fabric uh, knit. I don't know the actual name of it, but it's like a crinkly knit, and it's very comfortable, and I love it. Um, and we have a lot of finished objects to get into today, so I don't even know where to start. Let's do sewing. Barnaby is going to model, model our sewing, and this is the Bateen Dress by Tilly and the Buttons, and I did it out of a, I believe it's Birch Fabrics knit, uh, and it's my upside down birds. I think they're upside down. I can't tell anymore, so it doesn't matter. Um, the original pattern is for a cotton fabric, but she does have a blog post about doing it in a knit, and I completely disregarded everything she said and put in pockets because I want them. So I did it. And I think if you have a thick enough knit, it holds up pretty well. It's a little bit wrinkly because I packed it in my bag from the weekend because I wore it on Friday. Yeah, Friday. So, ta-da! I am super pleased with it. It was the first time I used a twin needle on my sewing machine, which is a Singer Heritage, right? Yes. Singer Heritage. This bad boy over here. I don't know if you can see him. And it was definitely a learning curve. I think it's my most professionally finished with the twin needles. And I'll try and get some shots of like the details of it. I'm just not going to try and move the camera because I don't know if this is going to work at all. But I love it. I definitely want to turn it into um, just cut off the skirt on the pattern basically and make it into some t-shirts. Because I feel like that would be super comfortable. And I 100% plan on making this in cotton fabric as well. So highly recommended. The teen dress by Tilly and the Buttons. And it's just so comfy. It's so comfy to wear. Um, I do have to get new elastic because the elastic that's in there right now is not a half inch. It's like an inch and a half. And I just fold it in half. 
So it's a little awkward, but I did buy some new elastic. So weird doing this and not being able to see myself in the camera. My next finished object is the Mount Pleasant top. It's done. Uh, I actually did this in like a week. It is by Megan Nodecker. Pip and Pin, I believe, is like the design company name. It's out of Leading Men Fiber Arts in the Gothic Queen colorway on their showstopper base, which is a 7525 um, merino nylon blend, just like a regular sock yarn. And I love it. It's covered in dog hair because I washed it with my socks. I've got an end sticking out. But it was a super quick knit. It was really addictive. It whipped up in no time at all, and I love the way it fits. I definitely want to make another one out of these. Um, in my Isaac base, which is the Superwash Polworth, and maybe like a light speckled, I feel like that'd be really gorgeous. So I'm glad I ripped out the Michelada and put this yarn to good use. And I would highly recommend this pattern. It is a cropped, but everyone that I've seen it in, has it looks amazing on so many different body types. So... Highly recommended. There's so much dog hair. Oh, what else? Did I just tell you anything else about this? Um, I knit it on size four, uh, Knit Pro Zings, and the lace was done on size three Addy Lace Turbos, I believe. And it used about one and three quarter skeins of yarn, so it was the perfect two skein project. I think that's it for this guy. I feel like I'm talking really fast, but. I feel like I have a lot to get through, so I apologize for the length of this episode. Our last finished object is Rhinebeck Sweater number one, The Branches and Buds Pullover by Carrie Bostic Hodge in Blacker Yarns. There, um, I did this in their brushwork. Um, what's it called? What is it called? Not dye lot. Uh, base. <laughs> can't do this. Um, which is a wool alpaca blend in the colorways Scumble and then the red is Impasto. And I finished this over the weekend and I love it so much. It fits beautifully. It's very fitted up in the shoulders and like to the armpits and then it's very relaxed in the body and the length is perfect. The sleeves are perfect. I just wish it wasn't boiling hot so I could wear it and show you. I'm so excited for this. The neckline is a little bit wider than I usually do. I think it's backwards um but I usually just wear my sweaters without anything really underneath it like a button-up or t-shirt or anything so I don't think it's gonna matter that much oh did you bring it bud it's podcast time can I see it you gotta put it down nope not yet okay uh and I would have put short rows in it if I thought of it but I didn't think of it until I was done with the color work so if you plan on making it, I would suggest that, but I think that's just a good rule for all sweaters. Ugh, I love it. The yarn blocked up so beautifully, and it's so soft and so squishy. It's just been living on Barnaby in the living room for the past two days. I love it so much. I can't wait for fall to wear it. I can't wait. And I think if I actually, if I actively worked on this, it would have gotten done a lot faster, but because it just became like a movie, theater knit. It took a while to knit, but whatever. I love it so much. Oh my god, I can't wait to wear it forever. Forever, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I think that's it for finished objects, and we do have a couple whips. Um, so let's start with... I feel like I worked on other things. No, it was just that sweater. Uh, so I guess the only other thing I've worked on, I feel like I haven't knit a lot in the past couple weeks because I've just been dying like a mad woman. Um, so I'm trusting my show notes completely and I feel like that's a bad idea, but whatever. So I guess the only other thing I've been working on is my Birds of a Feather shawl. I am in section six of 16, I believe. And I'm almost done with this mohair section. So this is um, the Birds of a Feather shawl by Andrea Mowry. I'm knitting it out of my hand dyed yarn once upon a corgi in the lady of shallot colorway um in our fig lace which is our mohair silk in our marie cutie which is corydale nylon i don't know if you can actually see this i don't know if any of these are going to be in focus now that i'm thinking about it but you're fine so yeah we're just chugging along it's been our knit night 
uh, knit and I'm hoping I can take it out a couple more times to try and get it going because I know once I get to the stitch count where you stop increasing it's gonna go by a lot not a lot faster but pretty quickly I don't have to pay attention as much okay bud I'll make sure I focus for this this is Iron's tennis ball I really don't know what else to tell you about this. I, uh, I feel very out of practice, so I'm not sure what I'm saying with my mouth. The only other thing I've been working on is my vending sock, which is the Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern by Erica Luter. I hope that's right. And it is in my Blood Moon colorway on the Isaac base, which is 100% which is through wash Polworth. And here we are. I have turned, uh, I think last time I showed you, I was like way up here. I didn't put a progress keeper on this guy. I should. Uh, I've done the heel and turned it and now I'm in the gusset decreases and it's just a regular uh, heel flap and gusset. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy, just chugging along. This is the second sock so I'm hoping I can finish this relatively quickly because at this point I would just like these done and ready for fall. Ooh, so many strings. So yeah, uh, here is the colorway on stockinette. I hope that's in focus. And it is the engagement colorway that I dyed up. So yeah, uh, I worked on it a little bit at SSK, but not not a lot. Um, and then a little bit at the trunk show at Cottage Yarn, but again, not a lot. Lots of lots of chit chatting was happening. I don't know what's happening with this thread though. It is everywhere. Uh, I'm knitting them on my US One um, 2.0. Two millimeter? Yeah. US one two millimeter uh, chow goose with the red lace cable. I think that's right. I, I don't know what is happening to my brain. It's shutting down, bubble up. It is shutting down. So, yep, chugging along. No way I could, I just talked about this for 20 minutes. No way. All right, let me regroup and figure out what I'm doing. All right, so yeah, I guess that's all I've been working on, so. Um, I think we're gonna go into a little bit of like what I'm planning next because uh, Rhinebeck is coming and it's coming soon and I want to knit uh, at least 10 million sweaters so naturally uh, this is going to be my next cast on and I'm so excited I'm going to pronounce this wrong I believe it's the Aliska pullover by Caitlin Hunter I'm gonna put the name down here and I am doing, and I'm so excited, an Edgar Allan Poe super gothic romantic themed one. And I can't wait. So, um, she said she did hers in a gradient set. So I'm sort of doing that. Um, I'm going to put a picture up too so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. The top portion, color one, is going to be tomorrow. I will be, I shall be featherless. The like bust portion, which is color two, will be inseparably damp. And then the like rib cage portion, which is color three, will be Ghoul Hunted Woodlands Wear. And these are all on a test BFL base that I didn't end up using, but I had sitting. And it's the first round of like dye testing for the Edgar Allan Poe colorway set club thing. So everything's a little bit more muted, but I really like it. So I might kind of tweak the dye recipes to figure out how I got these again. Because I'm really loving just how like dark and dirty they are. And then color four will be Nightmares plus 10. And this is on the penny base because I had some dyed up. So whatever. Rules are made to be broken. So this will be like the bottom body part and all the contrasting. And then in the yoke, um, she has pops of color that she used mohair for, which I did not know. So I'm going to use the Insufferably Damp on mohair because it's so different from this one particularly that I think it'll pop out. A lot nicer and won't look like I'm just reusing it. So that is my plan. I have swatched, I have the pattern, I have the needles picked out. I am just waiting to cast on. I think I may cast on tonight. We'll see. I've had a lot of self-control. I swatched yesterday so I'm surprised I didn't cast on. But I'm so excited. I can't wait. I love this sweater. I have been dying to make this into something for so long. And I can't wait. I really hope you can see this. I have to learn how to hold things up higher. I realized that the whole last clip, uh, you couldn't see the lace in the Mount Pleasant top. I'll add pictures. So there is my next sweater. I cannot wait. I am so excited.
And this sweater pairing thing kind of got me thinking, but I will talk about that in shop update stuff. Yes, that's the only major planning I have as of right now, besides trying to get a lot of stuff off my needles because I have a lot of projects on the go and I just need to finish them. I just need to be a big girl and finish my knitting stuff. Into stash building, which is a little bit of the SSK recap kind of thing. Um, I'm, I'll talk about it briefly here, but I am going to put up a vlog sort of of SSK just because there's so much footage I think I don't know I'm either gonna put like all the footage at the end of this, this video or I'm gonna have a separate video I haven't actually put it all into uh, iMovie to edit it yet so I don't know how much footage I actually have there's only like two minutes of talking so whatever I went to SSK and we vended and I did pick up a couple goodies for some friends and a couple goodies for myself uh, I went in with the idea of getting yarn for the soiree sweater and I wanted Stranded because I love her stuff and I creeped around the booth before the marketplace like technically opened but I told myself if the colorway was there at the end of the day it was meant to be and it wasn't there so I bought yarn anyway. Uh, I love it. This is her this mm, is this this one's my favorite basin. Iron sat on it so it's covered in dog hair now. This is her Fjord base, which is 8020 Superwash BFL and Nylon in her Yesterday's Bouquet colorway. So I got three skeins of these, and I, I'm going to swatch to see if I can still do the soiree in it. I don't know if it's going to be too busy for like the cable, so I am thinking about switching the cable pattern out for just like a simple lace uh, panel instead, and maybe that will be totally fine. I don't know. Again, I have to swatch and I hate swatching so very much. So I picked these up. I just want them to be something together so bad because they're all the same color and I love it. I do want to hold mohair double with it so I'm just debating if I want to dye something up to go with it or if I want to try and get the same colorway and uh, order it from her. We will see. We'll see next time it comes in on drift what the situation is. Okay. Yes, we will see. Because I also have, uh, this is basically all sweater quantities. So I've got some knitting. Got some stuff to do. I have to go through that. I like, I need to knit faster. There's a dog in the vet's office going berserk. We will see. I'm very happy with my purchase. I love it so much. I'm so excited. I'm excited to see what she does with the shop because I know she posted something about uh, definitely fall colors and then a couple changes to the shop. So I can't wait. I just love this. This one's my favorite. No, this is my favorite. I hope you can see it. And that's it. I was really good. Uh, we also didn't go to any craft stores or yarn stores, which made me a little sad. But at the same time, like Jake and I were there on vacation together not there to go buy yarn so it was good it was for the best that's what i just keep telling myself every time i get sad that i missed out on like the wall of brooklyn tweed it's fine i'll be fine so i think that is it and that will lead us into shop stuff and then life things slash non-crafting activities i guess so we are having shop update this week august 2nd thursday at 3 p.m uh, a lot of it will be all the yarn that followed us home from SSK and Cottage Yarns. We put about half up last week. We're going to put up the other half this week. We are also going to be including... Oh shoot, I didn't get that yarn. Hold on. Uh, we will be putting up dye to order kits for the Mischief Managed Shawl, which is a shawl design that I just did. Um, I don't have the shawl with me anymore. I gifted it to my friend. It will be her wedding shawl. Uh, so I will be putting a picture up here. But I am going to be doing uh, kit orders to do that as well as putting up some all like ready to ship skeins uh the colorway i used is this guy it is i hope you can see this field mice and flower crowns it's just a very delicately speckled purples and greens and navies and grays so the kits will include uh two skeins on the same base i'm going to do i believe penny oliver ginger and tesla as the bases you can order for it um, and then I will also have kits that will include mohair on our fig lace, which is um, 
70-30 mohair and silk. So you can hold it double because that would just be super beautiful. Uh, a friend of mine is re-knitting the sample for me, holding uh, the mohair with it, and it, it looks gorgeous. I'm getting it back this weekend. So uh, you can get it just the uh, fingering weight or with the mohair. So those will be up in the shop tomorrow. Uh, and I am putting together some dye to order kit, not kits, but uh, dye to order forms for DK weight sweaters and Aran weight sweaters. I find that that's probably the easiest way to for you to get everything. So then you know you have the same amount of the colors you need in the same dye lot. So I will be putting those up um, probably on Monday, and then I will announce on Instagram. I'm trying to get ready for fall, so. My brain's going a little bit crazy right now. Don't mind me. <laughs> uh, what else about kits? Um, oh, the advent calendars round two are up in the shop. I believe there are eight left. Um, after those eight, I that's gonna be it. Um, there's only a certain amount I can do. So um, that's that. So uh, those are up in the shop and there is an advent calendar shipping profile that you have to select for me to ship it to you. I'm doing the flat rate shipping boxes to make sure that everything fits and everyone's got a fair chance uh, worldwide really to do this. So there's eight of those left and I'm super excited. It is Muppet Christmas Carol themed and I've been thinking about this for a couple of years and I'm really glad I finally pulled the trigger and did it. Uh, what else about shop update stuff? Mm, okay. So I have this giant thing of yarn next to me because we have a ton of yarn in our house right now. There's so much yarn. I can't. My, my living room is just walls of yarn. So I decided to put together some sweater kits because I'm on like a sweater kick right now. Get it? Sweater kits? Sweater kicks? So uh, I am doing kits for the Aliska, which I really hope I'm saying that right, sweater and the Zweig sweater, both by Caitlin Hunter. And um, I'm just super excited for them. So, Aliska sweater number one uh, is these guys. So for your pop, you have Inseparably Damp. For colors, one, Fetterless. Two, Ghoul Haunted Woodlands of Wear. Three, Something Sinister. Four, Nightmares. And you will get one skein of each, except for Nightmares, you will get two skeins of that. Um, and then if you need, I believe, most of the sizes call for one of these guys and then two of the other one. Um, and if you need another one, I forgot what size it is, but I will have some dye to orders of those colorways up. So if you do need one extra skein of the last color, you can also get that. So that will be one of the sweaters. I really hope that was in focus. All right, the next Aliska sweater. The pop will be a mohair in fairy saddle. Oh, and that was on the penny base. So there'll be one of each of these kits. Uh, this is on the Isaac base and the mohair. So on mohair you will have fairy saddle. On Isaac you will have Hedwig, Lady Godiva, Dream Kitchen, and two skeins of warm and cozy. I did Zweig's the most because I felt like that was a very, that was just a lot of fun pairing these. I did this all right before I was podcasting. It sounds like someone is plowing outside what is happening okay so zwags i believe the three skeins goes up to the large or extra large i'm not sure i have to double check i want to say it's i don't remember what's up but i did the medium and i used less than two so that's what i'm going off of all right so this one is on the marie cutie base and the body is lady godiva and the lace contrast is inseparably damp uh, this is on the Isaac base, which is the Polworth, and the body is Fairy Saddle. The contrast is Lady Sh of Shalott. This is on Ginger and Oliver, so the body is on Ginger in Libraries Volume 1, and the contrast is my, Like My Cold Dead Heart on Oliver. I'm just loving the Marie Cutie. So the body for this is Marie Cutie in Blood Moon, and the contrast is Dream Kitchen, also on Marie Cutie. This one is on Penny. The body is Towers Over the Thames, and the contrast is Mermaids Don't Run Track. Here's another Penny. Uh, this is based off of the one that I did, so the body is Oswald for Mayor, and the contrast is La Dame Death. One more Marie Cutie, because I can't stop. It's just so soft. 
uh, the body is like my cold dead heart and the contrast is warm and cozy so this one I feel like is going to be super like gothic low contrast delicious just delicious all right so those will be going up I'll try and get them up in the shop tomorrow. If you don't see them, keep an eye out on Instagram and I'll put um, on the front page, I'll announce. It'll probably be like Monday or something if I don't get them up tomorrow, just because of photographing and editing and um, trying to get a wholesale order out. So we'll see how my time is doing. This morning was all pattern checks. Uh, we are hoping to get the pattern out by Monday. Um, that way you have this weekend to order everything and get the pattern on Monday and then hopefully within the next two weeks get the dye to order. So I'm hoping I can do all those next week depending on yarn shipments because I have to order more yarn. Anything else? Advent calendars, sweater kits, dye to orders are going up, shawl kits are going up, shawl release hopefully for Monday, no promises. I think that's it. Shop update, we did that. We will be bringing back No Sleep Till Ryan Beck. It was such a good color. I love it so much that I can't bear to try and re-dye something. That's not that. So um, those will be coming late August, early September. So you can get your fall theme stuff done and you can start getting your pumpkin stuff for the pumpkin mail. So yeah, I think that's it for shop update stuff. Um, again, shop updates are 3 p.m. on Thursdays. Ours is, will be tomorrow, August 2nd, slash today, depending on how long it takes me to load this, at onceuponacorgi.com. So thank you so much for stopping by and supporting the shop and supporting all of the other ventures that we have. Oh, we will also have Narnia on Ginger. Uh, that was requested a lot this week. Like five people emailed me. So we will have that in the shop as well. I think that's it. I think that's it. Okay. So the rest of this is life stuff, slash perhaps an SSK recap. Who knows? I'm not sure. Post edit will tell you. Yes, life stuff. We did SSK. We drove down to Nashville. We did the marketplace. We stayed there for a couple days. It was amazing. Uh, Nashville was not the city I expected it to be, but it was still very enjoyable. It was also very hot. I thought I could handle heat. That was hot. That was soupy. It was gross for a while, but <laughs> that's fine. It was still very lovely. We ate so much delicious food and met so many amazing people. I'm very excited. I'm hoping to make SSK a yearly marketplace because I had a blast, Jake had a blast, and I was very excited for him to see the actual knitting world and not just like me screaming at my TV about how much I love their sweater. And then Tuesday we drove to um, Charlotte, North Carolina, um, technically to Mint Hill, it's right outside Charlotte. We did a trunk show at Cottage Yarn, which was amazing. Everyone there was just so kind and so delighted and it was just amazing and I can't say the word enough. It was just so good. I was so glad that we could stop by and do a little pop-up and meet everybody and get to see the shop in person. It's in an old house, so there's different rooms. Like, there's a baby knits room, there's a cotton and linen room, there's a DK room, a fingering weight room, an indie dyer room, and then, like, a knitting room. It was great. It was amazing. Uh, and then Wednesday, we went to Annapolis to meet up with a friend of Jake's from work. So that was really fun and also delicious, and we ended up having dinner with his in-laws. That was a little weird, but delightful. They were very nice people. And then we got home around 1 a.m. Thursday. And then Friday morning, I left for Vermont for the weekend. It was uh, one of my best friends from college bachelorette party slash bridal shower. So Friday and Saturday was the bachelorette weekend. And it was we went hiking and we found this like river with the waterfall. We didn't find it like we googled hikes and it was there and it was filled with families and small children and dogs but it was so much fun and it was so good to see her and a bunch of other friends from college and meet a bunch of her new friends slash friends she's had for a long time that I just like haven't seen or didn't meet and her sisters who are delightful and then Sunday was her bridal shower which was adorable it was like a garden party themed and had the nicest porta potty I have ever seen. It was a trailer and it had like faux hardwood floors and a, like a real sink inside. It was it was excellent. That was the fanciest porta potty ever. It was a very adorable bridal shower with flowers and bride things and I didn't get to stay the whole time because I had to drive back to Connecticut from New Hampshire that day. And here we are. It is now Wednesday. I am still exhausted. 
but we will recover. So we're just trying to get back into the swing of things. Uh, I do have one recommendation for everybody and everything, and it is a book recommendation. My youngest brother got me this book for Christmas. It is the Black Mage series, um, and he bought me uh, year one, or first year, book one of, it's a trilogy, and then she wrote a novella prequel. It's by Rachel E. Carter, and it's just your, uh, I would say, I mean, it's your, like, standard, like, oh, young magic people have to go to school, and what happens? What do they do? What are, like, we must overcome things, and the romance. So, but it's a little bit more than that. Like, I feel like it's not so black and white with the good and evil and the, like, who's on what side kind of thing, and I really enjoyed that. And it sort of made, it might have just been because I was super stressed out and not sleeping. It, like, made me question a lot of things. Not question made me think about a lot of stuff which I thought was really interesting especially for being a young adult series I mean it's definitely young adult everything's like double spaced and the font's huge but I loved it so I read this um I started this not the Tuesday two Tuesday right not the Tuesday before SSK the one before that I don't know the dates I start. I read this on Tuesday I read the second book on Wednesday the third book on Thursday and then I finished the novella by Friday night yeah, it was amazing. I could not put it down. I couldn't stop. I was dying yarn and reading at the same time. I just could not stop. It was so good. I'm considering rereading this already, and it's been two weeks. I can't, I don't know why I fell for it so hard. Like, I love young adult, mildly romantic, and I usually get sucked into them a lot, and I haven't been sucked into a book series like this in years. What happened? Nothing. We we're fine. So I would, I just can't say enough good things about it. I hope she writes more soon. I want to read everything she writes. I want to read everything about the series. And I can't wait to find another series like this. I don't even like know where to start with how good I thought this was. I don't know why I thought it was like, I don't know. So job well done, stovetop, you did it. Yeah, I haven't been uh, sucked into a book series like this in a while. People, According to the back of the book, it's like Tamara Pierce, which I also love. I've read almost every single book she's ever written, minus like three Circle of Magic books that I don't think that we ever got. She, yeah, also fantastic. So good. So good. All right, I'm going to stop rambling about this because it was so good. Uh, I believe that is it. I do have some plans to do some sewing. I want to make the wallet. Out. I don't know I'm talking about this now but I have some sewing plans I would like to do now that I'm slowly getting back into a real schedule um yes I'm excited for things to get back to normal and kind of calm down a little bit because I miss sleep most of all and also vegetables I feel like since we moved to Nashville I just stopped eating vegetables and only ate sausage gravy it was worth it but I need some like lettuce hardcore. So I will let you go here. Again, all my hand dyed yarn and any information about that can be found on the website onceuponacorgi.com. You can find all the show notes for this episode and most other episodes on our group page on Ravelry, Once Upon a Corgi podcast. Um, yeah, if you'd like to get in touch with me, it's onceuponacorgi at gmail.com. So thank you so much for watching and I hope this wasn't too rambly and that I don't look too crazy right now and I'm at least a little bit in focus. We will see you next week. We are getting back on the schedule. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.